Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today, we're going to start looking at storage volumes in Kubernetes. And specifically, we're going to be looking at the empty directory type storage volume. There are a number of different types of storage volumes and for different types of use cases. But today, we'll start with this one because I think it's one of the easiest to understand. So let's jog our memory a little bit about how volumes work with containers, mountain volumes work in containers, and then we'll build on top of that to see how it works in Kubernetes. So back in section 25, episode 2504.3, which was called Building a Docker Image Part 3, I showed something like this, which is a container, let's call it container with the ID 1ABC, and then I showed that how containers can have, you know, of course, directories because they're like a little um, operating system, right? So they're going to have their own directories, which we've seen and we know for sure. And because we were introducing Docker at the technology at the time, that's why I went through all of this. And I also showed that, you know, the container is like your hosted operating system, even though um, it's on your operating system. It has its own separate directory structure. And so too does your operating system. And what I showed at the time was that you can then map volumes or mount a directory that's in your host operating system, in this case, something called slash C slash data, for example, right? That directory on your host into the container. And in the container, that information is going to appear as slash data, or that directory is just going to appear as slash data because that's how we choose to map it here. And I showed the mapping option for the Docker command, right? The minus V option that says, hey, from my host system, this is the path I want to map into this container. I also showed that so if you have multiple containers, in this case, we have containers 1ABC and container 5FAB, both of them can map that same data on the host. Now, in this example, I use the same name or the same mount point rather in each container, which is slash data. But I didn't have to because, again, each container is separate, is isolated. So even though it's referencing the same data on the host, it can use its own directory. Just in this example, I use the same directory. Okay, so now that was back in section 25, episode 4, episode four part 3. So if you need more details than that, please go watch that video. And you're going to find it in the playlist for section 25. How is this going to work now in Kubernetes? Well, for the pods, right? Remember, containers are created inside of pods. So when you have a pod, you have one or more container. Let's imagine that oh, no, we have a pod with two containers in it. And what we can do is define volumes. The very first thing to notice here with Kubernetes is that volumes are defined at the pod level. What that means is my volume one, my volume data one there. It's going to say what type of volume it is, how much storage it has, how is it backed, and all this other stuff. So all those information about how big this volume is, is going to be defined there at the pod level. Now, within the containers, I can then map which directory or mount point for that volume. So in container 1ABC, I've decided to map data volume one that's defined in the pod to slash data within that pod. But I can also map mount the shared volume for the pod at location slash share within that um, container, container one ABC. Now in another container, I can also mount the same shared volume. Again, there's nothing special about the volumes other than they're defined at a pod level, but how you mount them and which container you mount them to, that's your decision, right? And of course, you're going to do that in the container specification. We're going to see this uh, when we get to the command line. But I just kind of want to visualize for you what's going to happen. And so you have a way to understand. And so now, as you can see, since the volumes are defined at the pod level, and in this case, the one we're talking about, these volumes, it's not shown here. But for this video, we're talking about empty directory volumes. Those come and go with the pod. When the pod is created, the empty directory volume types are created. Now, if one of these 
volumes was of a different type, let's say it was backed by a network store, for example, then of course, restarting the pod and destroying the pod and all this other stuff, that volume storage would still be there. But that's not the type we're talking about right now. We're talking specifically here about the volume storage type that is the empty directory, which is tied to the life cycle. When I say life cycle, I mean how long the pod exists. And then of course, I have another volume called data two, and I could give them any name I want. I mean, I was just being lazy here. And that could be mapped into my other container at its monk point slash data. Again, I didn't have to monk to that, um, put it at that monk point. I could have put it at any other location I want the monk point within that container. And that is true for any one of these uh, monk point where I'm mounting the volumes. I could do it whatever makes sense for that container. So you can see that my green container has its own place that it can store data that persisted in the with the pod. And so even if the, the container dies and gets restarted, that data is still going to be there when the container comes back. And then, of course, it has a place where it can write shared information that it can share with, in this example, with another container. So this might be like the green container is probably downloading images and putting it in that shared volume. And then the gray container there is picking it up and sharing it on a website, for example. And then, of course, the gray, gray container have its own place that you can store data. It doesn't have to. Again, all these things are optional. I'm just showing you the, the ways in which it could be used. Okay, so now that we have that picture in mind, hopefully this sort of makes things um, clear of what we intend to do or what we can do. Now, let's jump to the command line and see how we can actually do this. Now, here I am, my command line. So let's create a directory that we're going to work with. And I'm going to go into that directory there. And then today, since we're going to be working with empty directory storage volume, all I need to do is create a deployment. And so to keep things simple, I'm going to create a deployment from scratch instead of using the deployment we had from before. Nothing wrong with it, but just want to keep things simple. Before I do, do all that, though, maybe we should go take a look at the Kubernetes documentation. And so as usual, we go to Kubernetes documentation, then we go to concept, and then on the concept, if you go here to storage, you can see there are volumes, and then persisted volumes, and ejected volume, all these different things, storage class, all this other stuff. And so if you just click on volumes, um, it's going to explain, the documentation is going to explain the different types of volume, why was the volume, and what is ephemeral storage, and the issues with that. And then the different types of volume that Kubernetes support. And for us, we are going to go to empty, um, the empty directory volume type. And that is forwarded down here. Um, so now I'll leave this reading for you because otherwise we'll be here trying to read all this stuff and we don't want to do that. So you just want to see how to use it and you can get the details there. So here's the key. When you create a pod in Kubernetes, remember that's the smallest or the lowest level um, configurable or schedulable element or resource in Kubernetes. You create a pod, pod contains one or more um, containers. And so with Kubernetes, what you're doing is you're defining the volume at the pod level. And then you're saying within my containers, how does that volume get mounted? So think of the pod as the parent for the containers. And so once you define a volume at the parent level, you're saying, how do those children access that volume? And each child container, right? Because we use the parent-child relationship here now. Each child container could mount that particular reference, that volume at a different path. Now, if this is make, doesn't make sense to you, let's just see if the example will. So again, let's start out very simple, and we'll say we'll create a deployment, that YAML file. So we're going to do a simple deployment, where we're going to use a, an Nginx image as one container and a Postgres image for the other container. And it doesn't really matter. We could use anything. We could use both as Nginx or both as Postgres, but just keeping it different here. So let's write that up real quick. So all that stuff is boilerplate, but for our container, we're going to give this first container a different name. We'll call it Nginx. And of course, the image we want to use is Nginx. And the port will expose port 80 on that container. 
Now, like I said, we want a second container and we'll just call this Postgres. And so that's the name and then the image is Postgres. For Postgres, the port is 5432, but that is not, that's not important. We're gonna put anything because we're not gonna use it. Okay, so that's it. That's our deployment. So if you remember what I said before, is that if you think of the pod as the parent and the containers as the children, what you want to do is to find the volumes for the pod, and then you see how they're mapped within the container. So this is the pod spec. So here's where we can define those volumes. And you can see volume, list of volumes that can be mounted, that can be mounted by the containers belonging to this pod. So volume represents a named volume in a pod that may be accessed by any container in the pod. And then these are all the different types which you see in the documentation. But like I said, the one we're going to do is the empty directory volume, but it's named. So we're going to say we want to do name volume. Here, let's call this volume, let's say Nginx store, for example, right? Nginx store, right? Just for storage for Nginx. And then we have to see essentially what type it is. So like we said, it's empty directory. So empty directory. And when you use the empty directory storage volume type, well, you have to give it um, some value. So you could say medium, which is how it's still backed, but we're gonna ignore that because the default is empty string and Kubernetes knows what to do. But then you could put a size limit just to make sure that though that pod doesn't do something crazy and blow up the backend store. So you definitely want to make sure you put a size limit. So we should put that and we should say size limit. And let's just do, uh, I don't know, maybe 100 megabytes, okay? Something like that. And that's all there is to it. So we have just defined a storage volume named Nginx. Now we haven't used it, but this is defined at the pod level. So like I said, let's do two more. So I'm going to do another one that's going to call, let's say, Postgres store. And that's going to, we're going to use this within the Postgres container itself. Now notice there's nothing here when we're defining it that says how it should be used in terms of which container uses it. I'm just giving it the name to help us later on when we go to mount it within the different containers. And finally, the last one. So let's come down and we do this. And so we're going to call this like shared store. All right, because this is going to be the one that's going to be shared between the containers. So, okay, just defining the volumes. So now this is defined at the pod level. And so now let's go to our containers. So I'm going to stick it in right below here. And I'm going to say we want to define volume monks. Okay. And so here are the volume monks. Volume monks. This is within a pod. It's pod volume to mount into the container file system. So the pod volumes, which we already just defined the pod volume. So which pod volume to mount into the containers file system. And then there's this mount path is one thing that it needs. And um, then the name of this um, mount, okay, the volume mount. So let's do that. Let me define the name first. So which volume are we talking about? So we, this is the Nginx app. So let's call it Nginx, Nginx store. That is the volume I'm talking about. And we're going to mount it at which location? Slash, let's do slash my store, for example. So within the Nginx container, if you go to the directory slash my store, it's going to have a, an empty directory mounted there when the container starts the first the first time and that empty directory is governed by whatever this nginx store um you know configuration is in this case is 100 megabytes does that make sense and let's put another store with um volume mount within this container and at this time we're going to call it the shared one so we're going to refer to the shared store and let's just mount it in this container at the shared store location. So we can see that the Nginx app has two volume mounts. So let's do the same here in progress. So 
we're going to do volume mount, same thing as before. All right, so now we're done. That's it. That's all there is to creating an empty volume, that's an empty directory volume, and mounting it into containers. And so let's go back here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's say, run K9 here. And I'll show you to do it without K9, but let's just do it with K9 first. But don't worry, we'll do this from the command line also with Coop Control, okay? Uh, in case you don't have K9. So K9 is running, and this is showing all the resources from all um, namespaces. So I'll switch to just the default namespace, and we haven't talked about default namespace yet, but it's looking at pods. But there's something called X-ray in K9. So I'm going to say X-ray. I'm going to say let's look at the X-ray of a pod. So what that means is essentially when you create a pod, show me everything that you know about that pod, the deployment and so on. You can do X-ray of a deployment or a service, but I'm going to look at a pod. So we don't have any pods running yet. So let's just do that. So we have qctl apply. And if I do apply ktest directory, oh, I don't have the ktest directory. What I have is just this deployment file. And I apply that and see create deployment. And what we should see happen is I have this one pod and it's coming up. That's the pod name. And basically it tells me the default namespace and there is the, my, those are my two containers, Docker containers within this pod. All right. So if I go to the bottom here and I go to my Nginx container, for example, and notice I can type S for shell. So I type that and I'm inside of that container. Very easily you can see here is the deployment and then here is that container, my app, that Nginx. And if I go to the directory slash and I do ls, you should see I have my store and then shared storage. And you can verify that those are there. If I see the into my store, I do ls, it's supposed to be empty. So let's clean up. And I can do touch this. I can do echo hello world, you know and then my data.txt for example and i can store this within that volume for this container now because i did not share or mount this volume into any other container only this internet container app access to this but i did create another volume called the share volume and i mounted it within both the you know nginx and the progress container. So we can see this. If we come here, again, this is empty. And what I can do is I can say touch shared.txt. It's just a shared file. And what I can do then is I can say while true do cat this file file shared.txt sleep for one second and then just keep doing this. And so Right now, there's nothing in that file. But if I go here, back to my command line, again, I'm in this container using K9, but that's okay. So let's do it from the command line now. So if I do Q, CTL, get pods, you can see I still have one pod. It's in a crash loop. Oh, I know why it's in a crash loop. Okay. It's in a crash loop because um, I use the progress container and progress, in order for progress to come up successfully, we need to give it environment variable, um, you know, password. So let's do that too. So I'm going to do env. And what I'll need to do is control C actually, exit out of this and recreate things. And so let's see when we do this. So we do kubectl and let's do apply and configurations change and you can see when I apply this what happened we have yet another deployment and we should see that though one is going to be terminated pretty soon but we should be able to have our pods be configured correctly this time and if I do get pods you will see now I have two of two and everything is running successfully so this is this F9 so let's do it again let's go back my bad Go back here to shell 
and if we go to slash my store and I do ls it's empty now remember what I said if you destroy the pods the data go away and that's exactly what we see here we have a new pod so the data wasn't persisted across pods it can be persisted across containers which I'll demonstrate so let's do this again so touch this and then echo hello world and then put it in my data that txt let's see into um, shared data and I'm going to say touch share that txt let's clean up and I'm going to say while true let's do this again do cat share that txt and then now I'll go here and I'll clean up and then say kubectl get pods I should see my pod running and then I'll do kubectl exec and I want to exec interactive with terminal into my pod here, but I want to use the container. So which container am I going to use? I want to use the container called my app that's Postgres. Remember, I have a thing. And what I want to do is run the command bash, right? And so there we are. I'm in this um, container. And so if we do ls minus l again, and we look, we'll see that we have shared store, and also we will have uh, my store also. You know, so my store. And if we go in there, it should be empty because we're inside of the progress container, and there shouldn't be any data here because this is specifically for the progress container. So I can, of course, touch Postgres if I want. And but the exciting thing is to go to the shared directory. And here we should already see a file called share.txt and it should be empty because all we did was touch it. But if I echo something into it like hi from Postgres PG and then I redirect that into this file share.txt, watch what happened. So immediately that information shows up in the Nginx. So this goes to show you that you can use the shared volume between containers so that containers can communicate with each other. Of course, they can communicate by actually calling each other. We've done that many times, you know, over network sort of thing. But here's where you can share, you can have a shared file system that they can use. And the advantage of this though, is that now you can write things to a file that the other one can read. Maybe one container could fetch stuff, write it to a file, the other one read it from that file, that sort of thing. Um, you have to take care that both don't try to open and write to the same file, but that's just going to be a typical thing that would happen with multiple applications trying to use the same file anyway, regardless of whether you're using containers. Okay, so we see that how this is working. So let's prove that our, our data survive across container restart. And to do that, what I'll do is I'll open another terminal and we'll do kubectl. And remember, if we do get pods, it shows that this pod is running. But what we can do is describe the pods. So we can say kubectl, describe, and we can say pods. And the pod I want to describe is this pod. And what it shows is the history of that pod and so on. But if we scroll up, we will see that we have containers. And of course, we know already that we have two containers for this pod, so there's no secret there. But what I want to look at is the container ID, because if we successfully destroy a container, it would be recreated. So we can look at container ID. So let's grab for container ID from this output. So let's clean up here. I will pipe this to grab, and we'll see that we want to grab for container ID. And so this is going to give us this. But we don't know which one of those container IDs um, is for our, you know, Nginx container versus our, um, you know, progress. So what we can do is say minus B for before and one, one line before. And so there we go. Really nice and handy, right? So we can see that my Nginx container ID is this guy. Now you can also do things like minus A for after, um, minus A for after, and one line after. We can see that those are indeed not only the name, but the images match up. All right, so let's do that. And what I'm going to do is I sort of want to run this um, as repeatedly, right? Um, multiple times. So let's see, maybe if I simplify it to just looking for this guy instead of the whole container ID, maybe I'll still get the same information. And sure enough, and the reason why I want to do that is because I want to get rid of this 
single quote here and I want to make the whole thing one long command by doing watch minus D for short differences and then control end and then I go here and then if I do this I should see the output like that great so again we should see our container ID change if I manage to kill it kubectl exec and I am going to go into that container and let's do um, it doesn't matter which one so we could go into the progress container and this time I'm going to do kill one and what it does is it kill the process ID with one and that's the first process got in it and once the process died the container dies and so as you can see even though I was in that container when I kill it it says command terminator with exit code da 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 and we just saw things change here for this container and let's just do it again I'm gonna go in this container and I'm gonna do oh let's confirm our data is there by the way so if I do share data it should be there and if I do my data there it is so we know that how um, this data remain because we touched this file and we also know that when the container is first created with this empty directory it would have been empty we would not have seen our file but since it's there right now why don't we echo some echo something echo i was here and then let's put it into my data and then the process file and let's do the same thing again kill one and so we can see if we keep watching, we'll see this number should change. Oh, there it is. Now the container is back up. Let's enter that container again. And we go there. And we see the into my store. And let's cat progress. And there it is. I was here. So this demonstrates that we can have data be persisted across container restart. So this is it. I'll end it here. And if you made it to this, Part of the video please let me know if you have questions or concerns and certainly if you are a subscriber thank you so much for being patient and taking the time to subscribe i understand that everybody asks you to subscribe and so you doing that i really appreciate it if you haven't subscribed and you watched the video to the end please consider subscribing i would love to have you be part of this community that we have a nice small community we have growing here and we like it to grow certainly and we like you to be a part of it otherwise Take care, see you in the next video, stay safe, bye.